Let's take a look at a rational function problem. Suppose we wanted to know what turn the eraser off. Let's see, x minus two over x squared minus one. Suppose we had this function. What does that look like? Well, it's a rational function. You have a polynomial, degree one on top, and a polynomial, degree two on the bottom. So rational functions have asymptotes. So it's probably gonna have some asymptotes. Let's see, where does the bottom equal zero? That's sort of our first step. Find out where the bottom equals zero. Because we can't have zero in the bottom. We can't divide a number by zero. So there's an asymptote, a line that it can't cross down there. Let me start to graph this. Well, no, let's wait. So where does the bottom equal zero? x squared minus one is a perfect square. If you ever see x squared minus one, x squared minus four, x squared minus nine, you know that they factor into x plus or minus the square root of the other side. So this is x minus one, x plus one. And I'll just draw the top here for completeness. So you could rewrite this as this. Trust me when I put a little x equal sign there. So it looks like this. None of these cancel. If they canceled, you'd have a removable discontinuity. You'd have a hole. But they don't cancel. So you have two asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, at x equals 1 and x equals minus 1. Let's see, I'll put one here, one here. Vertical asymptotes tell you where the graph goes off to infinity. It doesn't cross these. Now it can go to positive infinity or negative infinity. We don't know yet. We could be plugging in points all along and just see what this looks like. But finding asymptotes is easy. What happens when this x goes to infinity. Well, as x goes to infinity, as these two x terms get bigger and bigger, this two and one don't matter as much. And this goes to, whoops, x over x squared. All right, a wavy line. Goes to x over x squared, which goes to one over x. So it looks like the 1 over x curve at infinity. So remember the 1 over x kind of looked like this. Maybe you don't remember it. But as you put in larger and larger x numbers, this goes to infinity, but it stays on the positive side. If you put in more and more negative x numbers, larger x numbers, it goes to 0 also, but from the negative side. So we know what it does at infinity. Let's see where it crosses these axes, if anywhere. All right, let's, I'm just gonna try to erase. Very bad at erase. So we know the standby. This is not gonna work. I couldn't back out of it because I'd lose these, these beautiful lines I drew already. Oh, okay, that's perfect. So what does it do? Let's see, what happens when x equals zero? Does it cross, whoops. Does it cross the, does it cross the y-axis? All right. So what, what is f of zero? When x equals zero, this equals Notice I'm going back to the original form. You can use either form, but it's a little easier to look at it. So uh, x go equals 0. This goes to minus 2 on top. Minus 0 squared on the bottom. Minus 1. It's minus 1. So it goes to 2. So we have this point 2, and that's, that's the only 0 we get. So it goes through this point. All right. So that's our only, I'm sorry, I did the wrong. When f of x equals zero, 
equals minus 2. I did 2, 0. All right, so we have this point. I'm sorry. This is 0, 2. Wonderful. Okay. Well, where does... Uh, what happens when f of x equals 0? This is a different problem. Or, I mean, a different thing. We want to know where this whole thing equals 0. Alright, this is going to... The bottom can't be 0. So this is going to equal 0 only when the top equals 0. If you want, multiply top and bo both sides by x squared minus 1 to cancel out the bottom, and you get x minus 2 equals 0. Or x equals 2 is where this equals 0. So we have the point 2, 0. 0, 2, and 2, 0. Well, that's pretty nice. All right, we still want to know, so we know this goes to infinity, and then it goes through here. This never crosses again. It never crosses inside here, and this goes to infinity. I was going to show you, you can try points. Here's 1, 0, so you'd have to try fractions. You'd try 0.5 and see what you get. Should we do that? Let's just do that for fun. F of 1 half, or 0.5. It's going to be 1 half minus 2 over 1 half squared minus 1. Alright, this equals, so 2 is what, 4 halves. So this is minus 3 halves on the top. And 1 half squared is 1 fourth. 1 fourth minus 1 is minus 3 fourths. I'm running out of space down here. Minus 3 halves over minus 3 fourths. Minus signs cancel. Let's flip and multiply 3 halves times 4 thirds. I flipped that and I see the 3's cancel out. 4 over 2, which equals 2. So f of 1 half, x equals 1 half, this equals 2. Interesting. So, we could try 0.9, and we'd see that this number stays negative. 0.9 gives us 0.81, this, which is smaller than 1. The bottom stays negative, so it's still a negative over negative. But the bottom gets very small as this gets to 0.1. This gets to almost 1. So you get to a very small negative number over a very big negative or not small negative number and so we know this goes off to infinity this way so we can kind of cheat and well it's not really cheating we know it doesn't there are no more places where it crosses the x-axis it only crosses here so we knew if it went to minus infinity it would, it would have to go through this point and then it would have to cross the axis down there so we know it doesn't do that so we know it kind of has to go that way. If we tried in minus 0.5, we would get, I tried it, it's like 10 over 3, or 3.333. You get a number up here. As you try like minus 0.9, you get an even bigger number. I think you get like a 15. Okay, so you know it goes that way. Um, what happens when you you come from a negative direction this way. Well, you know it doesn't cross here, and you know this goes off to infinity, and either goes infinity up here or up here. If it doesn't cross, then it has to go down here. See what I mean? It's trapped, it can't go over there. It has to go to either positive infinity or negative infinity at an asymptote. So it goes down there. Right, so you can find out a lot about a function, a rational function, without putting any points in. You can, of course, put in a point. If this is minus 1, you can try minus 1.1 and see what happens. If I put in minus 1.1, you see you will get a positive number on the bottom because this is bigger than 1, and a negative number 
on the top, so in, indeed it does go to negative infinity. Similarly, we know it crosses the axis here and then goes to infinity, so it can't cross once. Well, it could touch, but, well, we didn't talk about where it touches or not. Remember, we dealt with that with polynomials. Now uh, we could put in the point 1.1. 1 .1. It's bigger than 1, but smaller than 2. 1.1, 1 .1, and we'd see we get a negative number on top, a positive number on the bottom. So we get negative numbers out there. Indeed, it would be a fairly big negative number, and we'd find that it goes down there. So you can reason out what happens at these. You can have, have all possibilities. They can both go to infinity. They can both go to minus infinity. Or one go to infinity and one go to minus infinity. Vertical asymptotes never get crossed. So this is what our graph looks like. We've got two points on it. I may ask you on a test to give me another point. Maybe like, uh, we actually have three points on it because we put one half let me ask you for another one over here just to show that you know what's going on here but of course you can always use your graphing calculator to check to make sure you did this right it won't show you the asymptotes but it will show you this behavior here so it looks like this it's, not, it's kind of a little crooked there it's going to look like that and so you have, I would ask you to also indicate that there's a horizontal asymptote at x equals 0. It, you can cross a horizontal asymptote. You can't cross a vertical asymptote. All right, so we're learning a lot of tricks to know what uh, rational functions look like. When you think rational, think asymptote. That's where they show up. And should we check this in... Uh, Let's really quickly check this in Desmos.com. Uh, let's see. All right, let's see what this looks like. Uh, remember, especially in your calculator, you use lots of parentheses. Uh, this was. Parentheses are free and extra ones don't hurt. Whoops, let's put that one in there. And there we go. That's what our function looks like. And that's as expected. You can see it goes through zero, goes through two, zero, zero, two, and also is that one half. Oh yeah, that's one, so that's one half. So there's one half, two there. There's our other point. It's nice that worked out. It doesn't draw the asymptotes. We can put them in. X equals one. These are not functions, of course, because you get many y's out for one x. But those are the asymptotes. Very nice. So now you're a master of rational function.